In a previous video, I went over how we could enable collisions inside of the bullet solver. But something that I didn't go over and something that was asked in the comments was how you could actually use animation on the object that you're doing the rigid body simulation on, not just the objects that are set to collide with that. So I figured we would go over how you can achieve this. Let's go ahead and set up our scene. I'm gonna drop in geometry node. I'm gonna drop in a cube for now. And I'm gonna scale this up a little bit in the Y and set this to a polygon mesh as well. I'm also gonna move it up a couple of units. And then I'm gonna drop in a sphere and we'll set the display flag there as well. Let's set it to a polygon mesh. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. We'll move it up in the Y as well. And that should be good. So I'm gonna need a transform node because this is where I'm gonna be doing the, um, the actual animation. So we'll need one for both the sphere and the box. And then we're gonna drop in the RBD material fracture. Give that a second to load. And we'll go ahead and wire that up as well. So you see we have our object is shattered, which is what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and set up the animation. So first of all, I'm gonna press enter. I'm gonna press enter here and I don't know. What's going on with that? Why am I seeing, there you go. Press enter and then we'll move this over. And I'm gonna go ahead and alt and left click on the translate. And I'm gonna go forward about 30 frames and I'm gonna move this back over here. And then we can alt and left click on the translate as well. And we'll set that keyframe there. Jump back to frame one and let's go over to our sphere. And let's go ahead select that and move it over and set the keyframe there. Jump back to frame 30-ish and let's move this over. We move it a little bit past the origin line here so that it hits the pieces and collides with them. So let's set that keyframe there and then we should be all good. If I click back on our box and go back press play, you can see that we have it playing. It's playing super quick, so let's go ahead, set that real-time toggle, and you can see that we have our animation playing, and it's nice and smooth. So that's what we're looking for for our animation, so let's go ahead and jump back to the material fracture, and then we're going to need an RBD configure, and this node is going to be kind of how we go about actually using the animation inside of the box because if I go ahead and looks like it's not working for some reason let's jump out there we go and let's go ahead hit our bullet solver up if I actually were to plug in this bullet solver and wire it up let's set up our ground and we'll set the collisions to deforming static objects. That's how you enable the animation inside of your collision objects. If I go ahead and press play now, you're gonna see that this is being animated, but this is actually being simulated, which is not fully what we want. We want the animation to be playing, and then once it collides with this sphere, we want it to actually be uh, simulating once it hits that point. So first of all, we need to change the constraints inside of our material fracture because this strength is way too high. If we were to have anything hit the cube, nothing would happen and it would just kind of fly off into the left with this, uh, this sphere hitting it. So let's go ahead, jump back up to our transform here because we want to find the exact frame that we are going to have our collision happen. So let's press play. Getting close here, so frame 17. Let's jump forward. So frame 18 is where the collision is actually happening. 17 is where it is the right about to happen. So we'll go over to our configure node now, and we wanna set this active and deforming toggle to being on, and we actually wanna flip-flop these to start off with. So 
up until frame 17, we want the deforming to be set to one because we want our object to have the animation on it. And we want it to not be active in our simulation because the reason that it was being, it was falling straight down before was because it was showing as active in the simulation. So by default, the uh, rigid body, the first input is going to be, it's going to be active in your sim simulation. So got to get around that by setting this to not active. And then we'll go forward one frame and we're going to go ahead and just flip flop these and just keyframe those as well. So now if I jump back to the bullet solver, I actually want to jump back to frame one and we will go ahead, reset our simulation. It looks like it's not wanting to calculate because I exited out of it. Let's go ahead and reset that one more time. There we go. So now if I click play, you're going to see that up until frame 17 or through frame 17, it's going to be actually animating along our animation path that we've set. But once it hits frame 18, it's going to break apart and be interacting with our sphere just like that. You can see it's interacting with our sphere as well as the pieces themselves are actually interacting with each other and the ground plane did as well. So everything is being fully simulated once it uh, is set to active in your simulation. So that's looking good. That's exactly what you want. Now, obviously uh, you'll have to adapt this to your scenes that you're working on, but that's the general uh, idea of it. Now, if I do jump back to our frame one and the material fracture here, if I set the display flag and I press play, you're going to notice that these fracture lines are actually changing. Now, that kind of concerned me a little bit at first because I wasn't sure how it was going to simulate, but once the collision actually happens, so if it were to happen on frame 16 here, then all of these uh, fractures that are currently being shown on the, our object, they would stay in, in the exact place. I don't think there's any way around it. I don't think you can freeze these um, these fractures in place. So do need to play around with it just a, a little bit, it's probably to get the look that you're, you're going for if you're animating something and you want a, a specific look to the fractures. I tried uh, in our material fracture, I tried changing the scatter from to attributes. Um, I tried some, some different things and here, uh, nothing seemed to actually work and uh, I couldn't find a way around it. So if you do know a way around that without uh, making these fractures all change with the animation, please feel free to let me know in the comments because uh, I would be interested in knowing how to do that as well. But uh, hopefully this helped you out. Uh, feel free to ask any questions in the comments. Like I said at the start of this video, this was actually brought on by a comment that was asked on one of the previous videos. So don't be afraid to ask questions. I'm more than willing to help out and uh, try to come up with solutions to problems. Um, if I know how to do them, I will look into them. If I don't, I will try to research it and, uh, and come up with a, a solution myself. Uh, you know, multiple brains are better at figuring out solutions than just one. So feel free to ask questions. And uh, I do have a bunch of other Houdini tutorials on my channel, a bunch on the bullet solver as well. So if you want to dive more into that, feel free to check out the playlist and uh, take a look into the bullet solver and the material fracture node. But I do have other videos on my channel as well, other Houdini tutorials as well as some Cinema 4D and Redshift. So if you want to learn how to use uh, Redshift inside of Houdini and Cinema 4D, there are some cool things that you can do between the two um, and some things that are specific to Houdini as well that I've shown. So check those out if you're interested in those as well. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.